one of something we should talk about, Marjorie, is the legal research and writing section of the AALS. You tell me if I'm wrong, but didn't you want them to call it analysis? Ah, uh, yes, that was a bit of co-opting. <laughs> I wanted it called, uh, I prefer to put legal analysis first because that's the first thing you have to do is kind of bam, yeah, and exactly. then you do your research and then you do your writing. So I thought that was a natural sequence. And the meeting, I think that was, uh, I forget where they were meeting, but I was here in Seattle, fogged in, and Norman Brand was in change and be in charge and he wanted the name they picked. He also wanted to, uh, Norman Brand was a very good legal reading, writing teacher, and we lost him to labor law. But, but he also thought that the chair of the section should uh, be in office for two years rather than one year. And so we got that passed. And then he had two years in term, and I, I think Ralph Rofall would had, I don't know if they still have two year terms. No, they don't. No, when I was chair, we did. And I thought. It was because there were so few of us that they no. had to have to be No, it was a matter. I was under the impression it had to do with the <laughs> We had a lot of positive numbers. numbers because there weren't that many of us. That's true because um, law schools were not paying the legal writing teachers to go to conferences. No. That came later. Well, and also, Marjorie, to begin with, there weren't that many people in legal writing who didn't just leave after a couple of years. The turnover was enormous. Yes, I can remember meeting very promising teachers, and two years later they were gone. Yeah. It was, uh, well, well, some of the schools you would call had caps. You weren't allowed to teach legal writing for more than two years. Yes, well, at our school, the cap was one year, one year and out, and I changed that. Yeah. But, um, well, that, I think, grew out of an analogy that was, I think, seemed attractive, perhaps, to people at the beginning. They seemed to think of teaching legal writing, say, as an instructor. As an analogous to being a law clerk for a judge. And so you did that for maybe one year, maybe two, and then you went on to something else. So I think in part it was that analogy, but it was also, and you know this, that people thought. Why would you want to teach legal writing? You want to teach constitutional law or something? Well, there was the burnout factor, and the other factor, I think, uh, was the fear that if someone stayed for two years, they might want to stay for three years. And if they stayed for three years, they might want a three tenure track. Yeah, and there was a big concern that people would get job security. And so there was worry amongst faculty law school administration about that. And it was a um, somewhat demeaning of legal writing as a possible profession because people just weren't encouraged to stay on. Yeah, the way they were not encouraged to stay on, they weren't encouraged to apply because the salaries are so low. When I started teaching, both Harvard and Chicago were using graduate students yes. to teach their program. And what was the most ridiculous thing, Chicago was hiring people from England to come over and teach legal writing. Oh, for the big Yes. <laughs> they had a program that brought English uh, uh, law grads, to, and uh, yeah. there's a slight difference between <laughs> their legal system and our legal system in the way we approach the analysis of, of cases and so on. Oh, well, it's our writing. That's <laughs> exactly. Who cares about analysis? Just teach grammar. 